I don't love just anyone I am not just anyone I rock heels, I rock Jordans And I wear wigs and rock my natural Can you believe he says I'm pretty But with dark skin He was dark skin I bought some Hennessy for these niggas Wonder if they love their mother I love their skin colors Hey Smoochies! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Samaya and you should go ahead and subscribe to my channel to join my Smoochie family. And also make sure you hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I post. <laughs> so it's been a minute since I've done a Greek video. I know that y'all really, really, really love these videos um, and they're very helpful to a lot of y'all. So of course, as my channel grows, I am definitely going to keep doing these types of videos. Um, but as y'all know, I like to do other types of videos as well. So make sure you guys check those out too. Um, this video is going to be about if you got a denial letter or rejection or if you didn't get chosen for the sorority or fraternity of your choice. It's going to answer a few of y'all's questions because these are questions that I get often in my DMs. A lot of my videos that I make on Greek Life are based off of the questions that I get asked the most in my DMs. And, um... Of course, I respond to y'all and let y'all know my, my responses in my DMs, but it's just help, more helpful if I can let y'all all know my answer all at once, um, you know, just to be able to get more information, go more in-depth, and, you know, you don't actually all have that same question. But, so, we're going to talk about a few key points. We're going to talk about what's next after you've gotten rejected or you didn't get selected. We're going to talk about how you should feel and how you should, you know, take it. Um, and we're going to talk about why you may have gotten rejected or not selected. So, at this point, it is after the informational, it is after interviews, if you had one. Um, even if you have an interview, there's still a chance that you can still not be selected. The interview is exciting because it's one step closer to being selected. And if you get an interview, that means that they initially liked you on paper. Like, they like you know your grades they like your accolades they like how you look at your accomplishments on paper your resume etc but they still have to meet you to see how they personally feel about you if they vibe with you and vote if they want you to be their sister or their brother in their sorority or their fraternity so it does not necessarily mean that once you get an interview you in there because you still have to pass the interview portion to be voted in so this video is about if you've done an interview and you didn't get selected it's about if you didn't even make it to the interview process we're going to talk about some of the reasons why you might not have been chosen so if you've got all the way to the interview process and you were not chosen it could be that you just don't interview well um, and that's a common thing and sometimes when that happens we tend to try to ask you back for a second interview just in case you were just nervous the first time to give you another chance to kind of like maybe feel a little bit more at ease and be yourself and get a better read into who you are um, because we do understand that not everybody is good at interviewing and interacting with people like that especially under some nervous circumstances like that it can be a little stressful so um, if you were not chosen after you went through an interview process, chances are there was something in your interview that they were not feeling that you said, um, one of your answers or something like that, and usually it is the reason why you want to join. That's the biggest thing that can kind of get you to miss out. Like if your reasoning for joining is very um, superficial and they don't like it, it just doesn't sound like you're really, really, really interested or Maybe you say, oh, my mom wanted me to do it, or, oh, well, my friend, you know, came to the informational, so I thought I would, too, or this is my favorite color, so I thought I would do this. You know, if your answer is something like that, then that generally will definitely help um, you miss your chance, because now they're going to be like, why would we want you? You don't even want us. Like, not really. You're just here. So... That could be a major, major red flag. Now, we can differentiate sometimes with nervousness, and if you just seem like you're nervous, but you are answering the questions, and we still kind of get an idea of who you are as a person, if you're hardworking, if you're responsible, if you're honest, you have great integrity, um, you're academic, you know, those sort of things, that we can get a feel for that throughout the interview, even though you are nervous, that will not necessarily mean that you won't get selected but there are a number of reasons why you wouldn't get selected even after interview and that usually is just of the way that you answer a certain question 
could rub someone the wrong way or um, somebody might actually know you and know something of you that might not shine a good light on your character. Um, you may look good on paper, but maybe you had a behavioral incident and they lived in the, the hall, you know, of your dorm, down the street, down the, like, three doors down from your dorm and they heard about you getting in a fight with your roommate over a boy or something like that. And they tell the rest of the chapter. That can affect your chances. So, different stuff like that. That's just an example. Now, if you don't make it to the interview stages, that means that there was something wrong with your application, most likely. Um, either it wasn't complete, um, which means that you didn't follow directions. It's really important. You have to follow the directions that are on your application. If it says write in black ink, write in black ink. If it says write in blue ink, write in blue ink. If it says type and don't print, type and don't print. If it says sealed um, transcripts, sealed transcripts only. If it says sealed recommendations, sealed recommendation only. Like you have to make sure to pay attention to details and follow directions. If you cannot follow directions, the very, very minuscule of things, the smallest detail could ruin your chances of getting selected. You might have had a great, um, you might have had a great essay, you might have had a great recommendation letter, you might have had a uh, really high GPA, you know, it might have been very, very impressive. But if you didn't follow directions in how to deliver the stuff and how to fill out the forms, then your stuff is considered incomplete. And if it's incomplete, it cannot be processed. So, pay attention and follow directions. I cannot stress that enough. So many people miss out on their chances just by not reading and paying attention to follow directions. That's really, really important. So it can be something that freaking small. Um, or it could be that your academics were not up to par. Maybe you have a bad pattern in your academics um, as far as, you know, your course load or uh, even just your grade point average or maybe your grade, grade point average was just the bare minimum just to get in, but it wasn't high enough. Yeah, so that could mean that it wasn't high enough or cushioned enough for them to feel comfortable with you taking on the responsibility of being a part of, you know, a sisterhood organization that actually does take up a lot of your time and um, requires a lot of hard work and dedication. So those could be some of the reasons why you were not chosen. It can also be your, represent, your reputation, your personal reputation. Maybe someone in the organization knows you personally and they do not vouch for you in a good way. Maybe they kind of say, I don't think they should be chosen because X, Y, and Z. And based off of that, their sisters trust their opinion and that's just what it is. Um, there are a number of reasons why you could be rejected, but if you feel like it's not your reputation, go back and take a look at your um, your actual package. Like, is everything up to par? Would you accept you? Like, think about that. Would you accept you if you were looking at this application among some of the other best people in the, in the university, some of the... Um, highest academics, the, the the most profile leaders in the university, would you accept yourself? Do you think you delivered the best possible you that you could deliver? Ask yourself that question. And if you think that you did, then it probably is something very, very technical, like not following directions. Um, and so also, if you receive a rejection letter, how to feel about that? It is okay to be sad because um, if you work so hard to get something and you are denied and you don't get it um, or if you just really really desire something and you just it's out of reach that can be heartbreaking and yes it can be a blow it hurts it hurts the ego and the pride for sure because you thought obviously when you turn the application you thought like I I could do this like they should want me and it it sucks to be told that they don't want you um, but I want to say don't necessarily look at it as they don't want you um, because it could just be that you need to improve on yourself and be a better you before you go and seek membership. Um, I would say don't dwell on it too long. Figure out what you can do to change that narrative. Figure out if there is anything you can do to change that narrative and if there is then work harder at it. Don't don't dwell on it. Don't go and bash all Greeks. Don't go and you know talk mess about the organizations now. Don't don't go and be like, okay, I'm gonna go to my second choice now uh, or anything like that. Because honestly, if you do that, it just makes you feel like, well, I made a good decision because you really didn't want this anyway. If you even had a second choice, a backup plan, you was gonna go to somebody else. You really didn't want this anyway, and that other organization is not gonna want you either because it doesn't reflect good on them to 
to want anybody's um, rejects or sloppy seconds, you know, if you come to me because someone else didn't want you, like, how does that make me feel? Like, how does that make my worth feel? You know what I'm saying? So, if, if I'm saying that as a person, just imagine as an organization, if you come to me because the other organization didn't want you, then you're basically saying that I'm less than them in your eyes. Like, I wasn't your first choice. I was your backup plan. You are not going to be 100% happy with me. You're just choosing me because they don't want you. And that's completely unfair to both of you guys because you're not going to be happy completely because that wasn't in your heart to begin with. That's not what you actually wanted. And they're not going to be happy with you because you're not going to give it your all. You're not going to be fully invested in it because that's not what you wanted. So my advice with that is do not go and try to flip flop and go to another organization it doesn't look right and even if that second organization does accept you you will be shaded publicly step shows stroll loss etc they will definitely throw it in there that your line sister wanted to be in my org she was at my interview you know they will definitely shade you and it's embarrassing so you don't want to be that person stick to your guns if you decide you want to be part of an organization stick to that if that's what you claim that you want to be a part of, be loyal. Like, if you can't be loyal and, and do what you say, why would I want you anyway? You know, so that's important. And if the undergraduate chapter does not accept you, that is not the end of the road. We do have graduate chapters. Do graduate chapter when you graduate. Like, if it was really something that was important to you and you wanted it for the right reasons, you would still want it even after undergrad is over with. Because when you're part of these organizations, you're part of these organizations even after undergraduate is over with. So it doesn't matter when you started. It doesn't matter if you started it in undergrad or afterwards. If you really want it, then have it. Be patient. If it's not your time then, then it could be your time later. What's next? And that's when we were talking about the grad chapters. Um, but even before then, you can always try again. If you're humble and <laughs> swallow your pride... Um, and I would say just like reevaluate what you presented when you went. Like go over what were your answers in the interview? Like what did you say? What could have possibly rubbed them the wrong way? And if so, prep yourself for an interview next time to say better and to do better. Go over your application. What was the discrepancy in your application? What could have possibly made them think this is not a really good candidate? We don't want her or him. What could have done that? Go over that stuff and redo your application. Like redo, redo your paperwork. Look at your grades. Retake some classes. If if they looked at your grades and they're like, that's not good. You need your GPA up higher. Retake those classes. Do better. Um, if you need more community service hours, find some community service that that you are actually absolutely passionate about and that you love and consistently do that. Do better. If you um, just need more leadership or to be more well-rounded and part of other things, start joining some things. Be be more, you know, be out there and, and actually involve yourself with the community. If you feel like they didn't pick you because they don't know you, start going to their events. They now know you because they you submitted an application, so they know your name. They know you're interested. You went to the informational. They know you're interested. They know your name. So show up to these events. Show them that you didn't give up. You still want this. You want this as much now as you did then. And now they're familiar with you. Now when you go in next time to turn the application, you're not going to hear, I didn't know you. You're going to be known to them. They're going to recognize your face. They're going to recognize your name. They're going to see like, oh, wow, I rejected her the first time, but she's been consistently coming around. She's loyal. She's really trying. She didn't give up. That speaks volumes. And they may decide to pick you the second time around. You never know. And if that doesn't happen, like I said, grad chapter is always an option. And that is there for you um, once you are done with undergraduate. Like, if, if the reason you weren't chosen was because of your reputation at that particular undergrad university, then when you do grad chapter, guess what? Your reputation did not follow you. <laughs> they don't know you. It's a whole new chapter, a whole new set of women. And they are also grown women. <laughs> I know that in college we're grown women but a lot of us are still young grown women you know in in our under like our low 20s to mid 20s but um in graduate you get the older women who have been there done that they're not playing they're not trying to be petty and 
play these little games and those sort of things. So if it was a petty reason or your reputation was a reason why you weren't chosen, then things can be different in graduate. Um, so look into that and the moral of this story is don't give up keep trying pursue your dreams do not settle because if you try to go to your second choice or your third choice or what oh this is easy to get into because not a lot of people are going to their informational oh, they're desperate for members or you think that um don't do that that's settling and you'll never be happy and neither will they so that's the moral of this story and um i want to thank y'all for watching that's the end of this video i hope you guys were presented with some information that was valuable to you guys if you guys like this video and want to see more videos like this give it a thumbs up leave me a comment down below if you guys want to see something else in the future also y'all as y'all know my dms are always open please give me a few days to respond to you guys because i do get a lot of dms um, asking me questions and stuff and i do try to give very lengthy and detailed answers so it takes me a minute to gather my thoughts even if i read it so don't think i'm ignoring you um yeah, follow all my social media in the description box below. Also, if you guys are new and you guys want to see more funny and creative content, make sure that you guys watch my joint channel that I just started with my sister. I will link that in the description box below as well. We do tags, challenges, and also advice. Just some fun things, not college related, but just really cool fun things to watch. And I would appreciate if y'all would still continue to support me on that channel as well. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. So I will see y'all in the next one. Smooches. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, bro. Baby girl, watch how you move. What? I got them vests on my shoes. I'll pop a pill and I lose. Wait, speed it up. Look at the diamonds, they eat it up. Got me two bitches, I'll eat it up. They thinking I'm wife and deleting them. Oh, wait.